Bran is brought along by Jaime when he leads the Lannister army to Riverrun to assist the Frey forces laying siege to the castle. Riverrun was the seat of House Tully and Lord Edmure Tully's uncle Brynden Tully had retaken the castle from the Freys. Bronn supported Jaime when the latter took command of the siege from Lothar Frey and Blackwalder. Both are dismayed by the incompetence of their Frey allies but Bronn expresses annoyance when Jaime suggests that he be the one to teach the Freys how to run a proper siege, insisting that Bronn is needed due to his abilities exceeding that of any soldier in the Lannister militia, to which Bronn rebuffs that is easy to be so. Reminding Jaime he was promised a castle, lands, and a wife for going to Dawn and has yet to receive any, Jaime tries to assure him he'll get all three if he helps him to command the siege but is cut off by the fed-up knight. Bronn and Jaime are visibly disgusted when Blackwalder fails to carry out his threat to kill the captive Edmure, whom the Freys are trying to use as a bargaining chip to force the Blackfish's surrender. Bronn is present when Jaime strikes Blackwalder for defying his orders to ensure that Edmure is treated well and fed. Acting under Jamie's authority, Bronn orders the Freys to dig perimeter trenches and to position trebuchets around the castle. Bronn expresses skepticism that Jamie's attempt to parley with the Blackfish will succeed but Jamie goes ahead. As Bronn predicted, Brynden refuses to yield the castle to the Iron Throne and vows to continue the siege. When Tyrion's former squire Podrick Payne arrives with Brienne of Tarth, Bronn sneaks up on Podrick and greets him with a playful chokehold. The sellsword is jubilant to see his old friend and the two exchange jokes about sex and sword fighting skills. Bronn then offers to give Podrick a lesson in dirty fighting, which the latter accepts. The siege of River Run is ended when Jaime manages to convince Edmure to order the garrison to surrender in return for sparing the lives of his men and son. As the Lannister and Frey forces move in to occupy River Run, Podrick and Brienne manage to escape with the help of the Blackfish who stays behind for a final stand against the Lannisters and Freys. Following the Freys' retaking of Riverrun, Bronn is present for Lord Walder's victory celebration at the Twins. He sits beside Jaime, expressing to him of how jealous he is of the amorous looks that the serving girls are giving him. Jaime tries to be modest, insisting that they aren't his type. Bronn then says, not blonde enough, taking Jaime by surprise and indicating he knows about Jaime and Cersei. Jamie then proceeds to loudly call out two of them, introducing Bronn to them as a hero of the Battle of Blackwater Bay. At first, Bronn resists, stating that he's not in the mood, but quickly relents and leaves the feast with the two young ladies. He is later seen riding alongside Jamie as the Lannister army returns to King's Landing. Like Jamie, he is shocked to see the smoking ruins of the Great Sept of Baelor. Unbeknown to both Jamie and Bronn, Cersei used wildfire to destroy the Sept, eliminating enemies in the Sparrows and the Faith Militant, as well as rivals in branches of House Lannister and the influence of House Tyrell on Tom and Baratheon's reign, who later committed suicide following the explosion. Subsequently, Cersei is crowned Queen of the Andals and the First Men.